great to see so many. It's unusual, as the commissioner said, to see so many people in a room that have been in this area for, for so long. I think this is probably the highest ratio I've ever seen, um, except if I go back to my Osprey Baptist Church days. That was a pretty old-lived Sarasota County folks. A couple corrections. Um, it wasn't 1966 I was in National Geographic, because I would have been nine years old then. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure when it was. <laughs> and then also in the spirit of full disclosure, um, I, I am the sixth generation of my family to live in Sarasota, five native. Uh, but my mother went into labor when she was in St. Petersburg. <laughs> so I was actually born in St. Petersburg. <laughs> and came back here at the age of uh, two days. <laughs> and my cousins, Always, they never called me carpetbagger. Um, that was but they let you far know, too. Right? That was far too. Yeah, they used the next worst word that they could think of, and that was they called me the Yankee of the family <laughs> because I was born so far um, north, to the north, right, on the other side of that uh, of the big water, the, the Manatee River, up there. Um, but anyways, I, I did. I was. Um, I've lived in Osprey pretty much my entire life. I still live in Osprey. I live on the north bank of North Creek. I went to Osprey Elementary School, which is now the Spanish Point Visitors Center, and did start the Ecology Club in Venice High School. I left high school immediately. Went into real estate sales. My father was a prominent real estate developer in Sarasota County. He was the vice president of Paver Construction, which was the largest developer in the county at that time. Um, the last subdivision he did was South Bay. And South Bay, of course, was a conversion of Florida land. And so a lot of the lumber that was done in the remodeling of our home, which is now Rossler's Restaurant, um, came from Florida land, the old tourist, um, <coughs> the old tourist trap there. Um, lots of interesting stories. And I only tell you these stories because Wade asked us to try to envision what the future of Sarasota would look like. And it's really hard for me to look at the future without having at least a scant look over my shoulder at, at where we were, where we've come, and how did we, that, how did we get here. Um, I was very fortunate that I grew up in a rural part of Sarasota County. We had 7,000 chickens a dozen head of cattle, two or three swine, two or three turkeys, and two or three hundred rabbits on this property where Rosslers and the condominium now, now sits. I would walk outside my back door. Um, I got a 12 gauge shotgun at a very, very young age and walked out my back door and began hunting right there and then. Of course, that is all now Palmer Ranch. And I would also go out every night, every afternoon, on the commercial fishing boats out of Blackburn Point and Osprey and Vamo, because that's all of, all of my childhood friends, that's what their parents did. So I grew up at a time where the, the pompano and the mullet and the redfish and the snook were just so plentiful, it's very difficult to describe them in, in those terms today. And I grew up in a time where you could walk just a half a mile away from the bayfront and see large coveys of bobwhite quail. And I mentioned the bobwhite quail because th there's two birds that I think are very critical in understanding the future history and benchmarks for Sarasota County. And no, they would not be the scrub jay because the scrub jay is actually a lousy bird to measure things by because they're such a specialist and they're so finicky and particular, you know. But there's these two other birds, the uh, rufous headed tohi and the bobwhite quail that once dominated Sarasota County. The rufous sided tohi, which is now the eastern tohi, would have been found all the way from the back dune system in the, in the, the shrubby um, um, thickets on the barrier islands all the way to the eastern Sarasota County line. But now because of land use and land development patterns that fail to protect any of that suboptimum habitat type, the bobwhite quail and the rufous, the eastern tohi, I'll use the new word, um, have been pushed further and further east, east as we move urban service area lines as either functionally or, um, or actionally. So they've been displaced. Um, I also grew up in a, in a period in Sarasota County where there was not a great deal of separation between the rich and the poor. It, you know, in Osprey, for instance, Osprey always has been a very, very poor town. Um, 
it just didn't, most of the people in Osprey just didn't know that they were poor when, when they lived there. Um, there were the nice homes on, on Casey Key, and Siesta Key was being developed. But the separation between the rich and the poor in Sarasota County, when you would go to church or when you, when you could go to school, it was, it was barely noticeable. So when I look back at those, really those two really imprinted images of how I viewed Sarasota, and then I look forward, I guess I used them not so much as benchmarks to go back to, but as goals to strive towards. I still think we have a lot of opportunity in this community for a much better form and plan development pattern that we have that in fact sets aside these natural areas so that we don't confine all of our natural systems to public lands. I think that's kind of a, um, um, a default position that a lot of people go to. It's like, well, we've got this large expanse of public lands, so we don't have to worry about it anywhere else, any place else. And, and that's a recipe for disaster. That's not going to work. It's not going to give you the continuity, the biodiversity, and it's not going to give you the elements that you need to maintain natural systems through millennia, through 50, through hundreds of years. And it's always been my site to build things and, and to have things that last over that time period rather than the time period of an elected official or even the time period of a generation. And I'll just, just close with this thought about, um, about, about the um, separation of, of, of classes in Sarasota. And this is something that has been growing at Sarasota, and, and most of the stuff I'm talking about is not unique to Sarasota. I guess my aspiration is Sarasota has the wherewithal and the vision that we're not going to make the same mistakes and do the same crazy things that other communities did that we can do better. But I am now at the Gulf Coast Community Foundation. I do a great deal of work with not-for-profit agencies. And I've started doing a lot of research. Um, as you know, I spend a lot of time working on impact fees and uh, growth um, analysis, you know, how much do you have to charge for new development to have a break even for roads and for parks and for libraries. And what I've come across here in the last couple of years of my professional career is probably one of the greatest impacts that we are creating uh, tax burdens, if you would, on all Sarasota County residents. And it's in the form of service workforce housing. That's kind of a term that, that, that I made up myself. Um, you could call it workforce housing if you want to, but sometimes workforce housing also includes those salaries that are up in the fifty, sixty thousand dollar a year range. I'm talking about those individuals that make anywhere from twenty to sixty percent of area mean income. So that's about twenty some odd thousand households in Sarasota County that are actually making less money than they can actually afford to to live here. I was at a Tiger Bay conference, just a Tiger Bay luncheon down in Venice recently, and everybody was excited about these brand new 25,000 unit um, developments that were going in. And the question was asked, well, how much of these housing units are going to be priced so that the service workforce can afford to live there? Well, the answer was zero. The average starting price is going to be about two hundred seventy-five dollars to $300,000. One codicil before I say what I'm about ready to say, this is not, quote, the developer's fault. This is not necessarily greed that's creating this. These are economic conditions that are creating what I'm about ready to say. And they're a community issue. The community is going to have to come to grips with what we're doing in order for us to get a viable solution and give the elected officials um, the platform to stand on to make it right. For every 100 units of marketplace housing that you build, you create the need for approximately 20 of these service workforce housing needs. So if we are building 20, 30, 40,000 of the market rate homes, we are creating the need for another eight to 10,000 of these affordable units. And we're not even getting close to it. I mean, we're, we're basically building homes in Sarasota County that people would have to make three times their salary in order to do. So what we're doing is we're forcing them and their families to make decisions. Do I pay my rent? Do I pay my utility bill? Do I provide health care for my children? Do I provide for healthy and nutritious food? Or do I provide for transportation? Sooner or later, one of those decisions is going to be the wrong one. The reason, one of the primary reasons that I work with so many homeless children and families in Sarasota County is there are no housing options for these folks to go to, and we are not planning for those housing options. If we don't plan <coughs> for those housing options and build them, <coughs> excuse me, 
concurrent to when the market units are coming, all of that burden, and you're seeing it now, all of that burden is passed on to government and government officials and taxpayers to solve. Last year alone, Sarasota County spent over $800,000 transporting homeless folks from wherever they are to the hospital. That's not how much it costs in the hospital, not how much it costs out of it. And these sorts of expenses just compound and compound themselves. The average homeless person on the streets costs it taxpayers $35,000 a year to do it and we have thousands of homeless folks in Sarasota County and if we continue the same building pattern that we want we will continue to lose Rufus sided towhees, bobwhite quails and create the need for more and more social services. So I look for a future in Sarasota County where all of those needs are taken into consideration and we move more from this reactive planning process to one that's very deliberate and not only measures the impact at the time of development but measures the impact through a continuum so that we attain the net cost of development rather than the gross cost that we use presently to, to analyze whether a development is going to be good or bad.